If you would go on our website, and I would still suggest you go on our website and you look at the videos and you look at the presentations that had to do with these topics, the problem is, is that they were specifically answered for the sake of dispensaries. The same questions exist, but now we want to, that we're being asked for two different verticals, three different verticals. So the question is, how would you unpack this question differently? And I don't think it hurts to know the answer for dispensary, but um, the areas are around how you would handle training your employees, how would you handle security and record keep keeping in these different verticals, how would you look at business planning differently, and how would you look at the environment? Typical, in, in same topics, but you'll answer them differently. I want to introduce um, a few people to you. We have, so, so I, and I'll be honest, so we have Tequila here. Tequila, what's your last name? Tequila Scott. Te tequila Scott. Yeah. So Tequila Scott, originally, before we had Tequila Scott, we had, um, we had Diane Strauss. Diane Strauss is one of the Gromentum advisors. And she also has a very, very long history in farming, agriculture, retail, a lot of this kind of work. Um, some of the questions, some of the answers that you see on the slides, in subsequent slides, I put together with Diane. So tequila, though, thank goodness tequila's here because Diane has the flu. <laughs> and tequila also has a huge background in infusing. She has been doing this kind of work for a very long time, and she also is a graduate of Oaksterdam. Yeah. And Oaksterdam is an institution that uh, trains people specifically for working with cannabis in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And so you did that a couple years ago, I assume? Yes. OK. So Jeez, more than a couple. So thank you for, for pinch hitting here. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we won't throw you too much um, by being on the topic. Tom Carnival is here with Umbrella Industries, um, or technology. Either is fine. OK, fine. Um, you may recognize Tom because if you've been to any of our events in the past, he's spoken at all of them, almost all of them, not all of them, but almost all of them. And he's a technology professional, he has a firm, he's helped a lot of the people here with their previous application for dispensary, um, he's helped a lot of people even outside of this room with that. And so from a security and record keeping perspective, he's going to help enlighten us on how to change it up a little bit for this. And then Mario, Mario Tello is also a very close part of Gromentum. He's been involved since we got started. He's also a graduate of Oaksterdam, he's a master grower. He has been working in the field of growing ever since, actually before he ever went to Oaksterdam. And he um, does a lot of training um, for people in grow um, to teach you everything you need to know, soup to nuts, on how to grow and how to deal with anomalies and all this kind of stuff. So uh, also Mario was on the Gromentum staff. So you'll see, you'll always hear a lot from Mario because he's also at a lot of our events. So uh, in introduction of Bruce, everybody has met Bruce before. Bruce is a, a team member with Gromentum Lab. And uh, we'll, I'm hoping he can an ask and then answer the question on business planning in this section. Uh, my name is Bruce Montgomery and I teach business. Uh, I work with entrepreneurs, uh, of all shapes and sizes, and a lot of my work is around uh, helping people craft uh, comprehensive business plans and also uh, putting presentations together so that they can uh, pitch their business to the resources they need in order to uh, implement the strategies they have. Um, my thought about this opportunity today is, number one, I'm uh, delighted to see as many of you out uh, today to uh, take a look at this opportunity. Uh, you are definitely some brave souls. Uh, I would say I'm a little concerned because uh, the time that is available to respond to the intricacies of this application is a little on the ridiculous side. Uh, it is a, they're asking a lot in a short period of time, and if any of you are successful in e any way coming close to this application, I will be amazed uh, because just doing uh, a few portions of what is required is no small order. So don't feel uh, at the outset when you're looking at this, and I'm sure if you're not intimidated, you should be. 
because there, there's a lot that has to be gone over. But if you are committed, uh, I always tell my entrepreneurship students, my small business students, don't let anybody talk you out of what you want to do, even me. If I seem intimidating, don't pay any attention to me. Be sure and be focused and be <coughs> on your game. And so deadlines will come and go. This will not be the last time uh, this, this round goes on. And there's a lot of concern that some of the people that participated uh, and you know that we heard that there was what 600 700 applications for a dispensary for how many licenses so most people are gonna go home empty-handed and some of those that end up with a dispensary are not got, gonna come anywhere close to actually making something happen because even if they get awarded a license they got to do what find a location what else what else what else? They need to come up with the money to, to find out that it's going to be more complex to do this. Even the ones that were currently in business and got grandfathered the, uh, the opportunities, they found out that what? They weren't ready. They didn't have product. They didn't have security. They didn't have a way to effectively communicate with their customers. And then the people that were already in line because of having medical cards, they're like, hey, what about us? So this is a complex business. Uh, the lines are moving. And like uh, I heard Amy mention earlier, when you think about infusion, when you think about craft growing, when you th craft growing has not taken a hold, as far as I can tell, anywhere in the United States, really except for those places where people have been doing it for years. What is that called? Don't worry about it, don't, don't answer that question. So uh, there's, there's a lot of moving pieces to this, but you guys are in a wonderful position to start the journey. You know, make every effort to put the best application together you can, but as you start seeing that you have some questions, that's good, because now you can start figuring out where to go to get the information to answer those questions so that as you keep moving, you will get closer and closer to your goal because you may find out one of the things that I've preached as it relates to this whole cannabis experience is there's a big world out there of ancillary opportunities. I had some friends, I have an IT background and I'll be brief and get to the point of the questions and start to take advantage of these wonderfully talented people that are here, but I've got a friend of mine who is in the, has an IT background like myself. He recently raised about $4 million to help him uh, implement. He's got a business called Leafy Trade. Look it up if you don't know about it. It's here in Chicago. Uh, two guys found a company called Leafy Trade, and their business is providing IT services. So they plan on being a very successful, scalable, profitable company and they probably will never touch a flower or an oil or anything, it have any security concerns, nor did they have to ask anybody's permission. Right. They didn't have to go through the 115 steps that you are ready to go through, where you've got to get fingerprinted and they want to know what your grandmother's ID and all the rest of that kind of stuff. So pay attention to this industry. It's moving as we speak, and there are a lot of ways to participate uh, that will be emerging every day. These opportunities with the state of Illinois are just one, but one of the things we know about the state of Illinois and Cook County, City of Chicago, is they sure are interested in taxing you. <laughs> so just a word to the wise. <clears throat> okay, uh, so Craft, Grow, and Cruise Transportation License Application Session. We have some questions here. The first question is from Mario. In your application, how would you demonstrate that you would staff people with the appropriate skills for working in a craft grow facility. All right, so first off, I would be trying to find people that have transferable skills to the industry that I'm working in. Give me an example of a transferable skill. An electrician. An electrician. He has transferable skills to be a part of that team that knows what's going on inside the facility. Why electrician? Lumens and Lights. Spectrums of lights. You mean like HVAC and the kind of environmental conditions? Because lights are very critical to doing what? Growing. Growing indoors. All right. So that's a trend. Any more? Uh, 
any type of dirt irrigation specialists that you may know of that work landscaping horticulture and these are people that don't have any experience in marijuana like if you mm -hmm. know right. people in the street then you know people in the street that know what they're doing and you can assemble a team that way yeah. or they're they're not so few and far between you know? now but when they, you say assemble a team you mean get resumes uh have interviews uh, uh have some of the skill sets that they will be using as it relates to the business you're talking about right okay mm -hmm. How, how big a staff do you think you need for some of these areas? Well, it's dependent because, I mean, they're allowing you 5,000 square feet of grow, but you don't have to use 5,000 square feet of grow. That's the canopy limit, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess according to whatever size grow you're going, but I mean, 5,000 square feet, I probably have like eight guys, eight, eight to 10 on the team. And is that one shift, two shifts? It's Are like, they there 24 hours? Are they there 18 hours? Are they there uh, eight hours? Two shifts. Okay. Yeah, easily. Two I mean, shifts. These, these, are, these are things, you know, this is not. Nah, yeah, for sure. But I mean, right. like, security, I mean, your setup could be fully automated. You got everything linked to your phone. You know, like, it's not that imperative, but setting it up and getting it down on paper as with your plan for the application, that's mm -hmm. definitely one thing that I would do to be above par is gather the right team. For sure. Excellent. Uh, Diane seemed like you wanted to well, chip in. Well, it's not Diane, it's I mean, tequila. Tequila. I know, wanted, I know. She, she wanted to chip in on that answer. Did you have some thoughts about how to find uh, good people to be part of your application team and what they would contribute to the process? Absolutely. Um, he and I went to the same program, so obviously I have the experience in infusion as well as horticulture, and I have been farming for years. So, yes. Um, you don't look like a farmer. I don't have to look like I want to be one. All right. <laughs> Tell it. Tell it. So <laughs> I would think, honestly, if you if you have a lot of people who understand what to do, but they don't have the actual experience because they're black market individuals, you can get someone who manages those people. You follow mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. So on your application, it can be the manager. That's really important, but they may not have that experience. They just know how to manage right and so the actual people that you're employing have the true knowledge and actual years of experience you follow me so you actually have people who know so people who actually know what they're doing but don't have that technical experience can still be employees and staff members blah 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 but the actual manager who has it extra the experience that you need on paper should be on your on your in your application now tom you definitely qualify as someone who knows what they're doing because a bit. you have done it very effectively uh, what are your thoughts about uh, this conversation and when to think about security as it relates to a, a craft or an infused uh, experience? Uh, security should be sewn into everything, if you ask me. It should be sewn into uh, the, how you're training your employees. Um, creating the culture of security in everything uh, from the business plan to the training uh, to the onboarding of employees, to uh, the application itself is, is a lot of the, the soul, I'll call it, of, of the application and the operations itself. Um, uh, I, 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 I firmly believe that. Can you reference, again, given the fact that these uh, bold individuals here today are trying to get their hands around a whole mm -hmm. lot of information yep. in a short period of time, can you direct them to some things like uh, a checklist or, or where they may look for some resources that could help them at least um, have a, a good handle on these steps and then be able to reference those steps in their business plan where at least they can show evidence that they understand what the issues are? Sure, we have, we have some resources on our website, but I, I think you know the specifications are uh, uh, very much different um, this time around, uh, uh, cross-examining it versus the dispensary. Um, the emergency 1300, 355, 380, and 385 uh, that were introduced uh, a few weeks ago uh, are uh, specific to the record keeping and security plan are stark differences. Mm. I think a lot of people went into the new year thinking, Oh, I applied for dispensary. There's going to be a lot of copy-paste work. I disagree wholeheartedly. Wow. Um, 
for, you know, so, and I have many, many specifics to share, uh, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole if, unless you're not uh, ready for me yet. Well, then let's just create a dividing line then, okay. just for the sake of understanding more about who's in the room. How many people are thinking about a craft grow uh, activity? Okay. Okay, so that's about half, almost half. How many people are thinking about an infused activity? Okay. Okay, and then how many people are thinking about transportation? Everybody. You all want to do everything. <laughs> this is smart. This is a smart group. That's right. And, and it's smart because there was half maybe craft, half maybe infusion, and you know the, the, the middle of this business, which is the, which is the transport, if, if I could break down what the transport is in its simplest form, it's basically a liquor license. Mm -hmm. It's a liquor distribution license is really what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. And you are in the meat uh, of, of a new industry selling to, selling from, carrying here, carrying there. So if there are shortages, you need to be an expert on what's going on in the industry, where certain strands are being, you know, are, are uh, you know, the, there's the, you need to be the insider information between in the B2B market of Illinois cannabis. Mm -hmm. And I think a smart applicant would strongly consider the transport um, in, in complementary to the other license or business model. Whichever one they are. And, and I think you brought, yes, uh, I, let, let's hear that question, please. I don't know if I do Q&A, but. No, come on. Just a flashback one. Um, I hear that a lot, but I don't understand. That's possible. Yeah. If you have unlimited transportation, the opportunity is, uh, it, it, well, so first and foremost, in, uh, in section C of the transport license, you must identify what your partnerships are, what your relationships are, and it's 25 points. In that exhibit, uh, if you are not, uh, you, can, you can say part of our plan is to be manufacturing and distributing. And that increases your points. So right there, if the Illinois state of Illinois is allowing applicants and wants to know how this is being distributed, they, they are thinking about critical mass. They are thinking about the macro picture of how this industry is going to evolve and compound over time. And uh, the regulations for the existing transport licenses for the very few uh, uh, medical uh, slash uh, RC um, uh, dispensaries that are available, they have to fall in line with regulations just like the new transport licenses are. I guess what I'm trying to say is clear because I'm right about to explain it. Sure. For a safe dispensary, right? Yep. You can't have 40% from one cultivator. So you're forced to kind of have relationships. In these spaces, like if I'm a cultivator, I don't have to diversify for transport. I'm saying, like the social equity standpoint. So I'm saying, like, there are scenarios where you gotta have thousands. I think I think you're absolutely correct. I, I think you're absolutely I, I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, but but here's here's the point I think it, it, we, we were trying to make is that there is an inherent synergy. Like like when I asked the hands, a lot of you all raised hands saying that I'm going to do craft, I'm going to do transportation, and I'm going to do confused because you're thinking about the potential synergies that would play, and I think that's what you were suggesting. Absolutely. That, that gives you an added advantage. So, but here's one thing I'd like to point out. Uh, transportation, distribution, and logistics are all about data. It's about the data enablement that you have with who it is you're providing a service to. And so I think the point is, liquor distribution and all distribution today has a huge data integration component. What do people want? When do they want it? How fast can they get it? Because if you look at transportation period, Uber, Lyft, you know. That's wrong, that's wrong point. Stop using those scenarios. There are thousands of liquor stores. There are thousands of opportunities. What I'm saying is they're like only going to be 200 components. As a transporter, I'm not going to be able to Uber the product to a consumer. Of course not. Uh, yes. Well, I, 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 I,
Yeah, you're, you're absolutely, again. I, I, you're, you're right, but you're, I think you're, your whole point, underlining point, is the legacy, is the legacy contracts. This is a whole new right. world we're coming into, right. a whole no, new set of licenses, whole new regulations, whole new marketplace that has been, you know, it, it took medical. Medical was very undervalued in the beginning. Well, not undervalued, that's the wrong word. It did not do well. It did not meet projections of revenue when it hit the street in 2016. It underperformed, okay? And so you're referencing the legacy architecture, which has been underperforming, okay? The state of Illinois recognizes that. <laughs> and that's why they pushed to get this done last year. They pushed to get the first round of licenses last year, and they're awarding all of this come summer. And this is a whole new generation of licenses. So I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't if I'm an entrepreneur, be hung up on what exists. I wouldn't do that because there's a whole, the, the size of the market at current state is not what it's gonna be in, a, in, in 12, 24, 36 months. Mara, it's just you, not. You have, a, you have a comment you'd like to make about uh, the, the, the interplay or should everyone basically be taking an integrated approach, looking at have, having craft, look, look at have grow, looking to have infuse, looking I mean, to have My opinion is starting collectives between these wheels, you know, and working in synergy together and just... So having strong competencies that right. team up right. to make it work. Right, because there's always going to be Burger Kings and McDonald's and Arby's and whichever other type of brand, you know, to, it's going to be... Competitive. So, so then to your point, one of the things is the, the purpose of the submittal is to demonstrate competency and expertise in the skill sets that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that are going to be going after transportation, are you able to effectively communicate your current competency and knowledge within being a transportation company? Is this your first you know, uh, ball game in transportation or do you have some legacy experience in transportation? Is this your first ball game in infusion? Do you currently bake? Do you currently brew? Do you currently have some other kind of skills? And can you say, I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been a craft uh, beer company for 20 years. And so I think I know a little bit about you know, what I'm about to infuse. Can you make that state, statement on what you're about to infuse? Have I been making cookies for 25 years? I've been making cakes for 25 years. I'm making gummies. I'm one of, you know, Chicago is one of the biggest candy Producing cut, you know, I, I worked at Ferrera Pan Candy for the last 35 years. I was head of production and procurement and quality control and all of that. Now I'm moving over here. I think I'm bringing that experience with me. Can any of you demonstrate? Because again, it's not what we say, it's what we document that is submitted that someone reviews that when they read it, they say these people know what they're doing. And they have the economic model to show they understand their cost. They, they didn't just give me one number, they gave me some scenarios that I have a what if, I have a 5% margin of error, I have a what if I don't get all of the customers I think I'm gonna get, I still am gonna be able to break even and my number suggests I understand what uh, my model is, my business model is, and there's some other strategies I can take into place. Bruce, I've got a question for Tom. Yes. It, it kind of uh, dovetails with what you were asking him. So. In our last round for dispensary applications, uh, y you produced a 19-point checklist that we have online. Is that irrelevant to the requirements now, or is it something that can be used and maybe supplemented? Like, how it's very different, Amy. It's very different. Okay. It's I just wanted very to make sure because there are some resources there, and this is where I'm saying like, it's not clear. So it's very, very different. Um, I will give a lot of it. So I've been, uh, so on, for 20 years on and off in different shapes and sizes, I have been either writing government request for information, RFIs, and request for bid, RFPs, for municipalities, for um, you know, state agencies, for, for, for some of the largest transportation uh, government uh, organizations in the world. I've, I've developed requests for proposals and specifications. And I've also responded <laughs> to government RFPs, RFQs, RFIs. Um, and 
it, it never seems, uh, it, it never shocks me, but it's always like, when, I, when you think you're getting into 2020, oh, maybe it'll get a little bit better. You know, we're in 2020, we're, you know, we're referencing like, you know, back to the future time where everyone's supposed to be super smart and have everything you know, organized and done. But uh, there are specifications in this security plan that are referencing 20 year old technology. And then it combines that with not only in the dispensary did you have to have 90 days storage on for, for your surveillance on premise, you now, in addition, have to have 90 days storage in the cloud. It says that specifically, 90 days on premise and, and in addition, 90 days cloud. And so they're referencing, you know, uh, TVL lines, which is analog transmission <laughs> resolutions, not pixels, like which, which is, they say IP. So look, no one's a security expert. I know what they mean. Um, but I mean, the, 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 the surveillance in itself are stark differences uh, uh, from what the dispensary was. Um, so that, that being, you know, the, mo the, the most like am amazing, not only do they want 90 days on-prem storage, they want 90 days cloud storage. That's not cheap, okay? And I wanna be very clear with you. So storing data in the cloud, like text files, okay? Or, um, and things like that. That's why Google gives you, like when you sign up for a Gmail account, they give you free cloud storage because they know most of it's not gonna be video. And most of it's gonna be like your Google Sheets or your Word docs or your, you know, you know, Google Docs. It's but gonna when be, it becomes video. But when it becomes video, it is a whole new ball game. It's huge. It's 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 very large file sizes, and to store ninety days of recording footage data of twenty four hours a day of twenty four hours a day oh. is expensive, and it's not a one time cost. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's monthly. So so then one of the things that. Uh, um, has anybody recognized that there is an opportunity to ask a clarifying question of the uh, Department of Agriculture? That's what this bottom is on yeah. every single page of this document. So, yes, so in other know. words, some of the things that are being asked in the current process is what I would call version 1.0, meaning it almost makes no sense. So then there's going to be a 1.0. One, there's going to be a 1.2, there's going to be a 2.0, but the only way it's going to be that is if you, the person who is looking to participate, call and ask for clarity and make some suggestion about a better way to do it that would be more appropriate and not an impediment to doing business. Some of these things are cost prohibitive and are impediments to doing business. And I think the people who are writing this don't realize the, the, you know, the expense they're putting on you. Yes, question please. Ultimately, are, is your company going to offer a template like you did for the dispensary? Say again? Are we going to offer a template um, that like we did before? What, what kind of template? She, she's asking if we're going to be offering a template. Like the one you did like last the time. Like the checklist? Yeah. yeah. So you'll do a checklist? For the overall? We'll do a checklist. Yeah, we'll do a checklist for, for sure. But also, there was uh, the opportunity to purchase a yeah. Through security companies for you know whatever X amount that they're charging, is your company doing that this time for? Purchase a security plan. So uh, yeah, yes, we, we 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 you know part of our business is developing you know these various exhibits for clients and recommending and um, also also reviewing them. Um, yes, that is an option. I just hope that you weren't referencing. Um, the security contracts, oh, so uh, if like it was with, with the they uh, dispensaries, because the there's another stark difference in that area. Like but yes. That. All right, I don't, I don't want to spend all the time on security, but I think it's clear that security is a time that's going to be se severely, uh, re you know, required because of the differences between the two. Uh, but let's let's spend a little time that we have left on just the production of the business plan, and again, how to kind of get through this with some of the key exhibits that you're going to need to have. Again, just as a way of polling our audience, how many people have a template 
that they are currently using to fill in the blanks on the issues surrounding this business plan? How many need that? Okay. How many of you have, let, let me just, how many people here uh, did, was part of a team that submitted a dispensary application? Okay, so a significant portion of you then have, have some good experience. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, so the business plan part of it, uh, for those of you that have not, did not go through this process previously, um, but need to go through it now, have you also had some previous experience on doing a business plan for any business, by a show of hands? Most, most everybody had some kind. So do you feel pretty confident that you can approach the business plan for the different types of businesses that you're talking about? Because again, some of you said, I'm doing craft, I'm doing infused, and I'm doing transportation. You're gonna have a business plan that suggests competencies in all of those areas. Yes, question. Just a quick question. Um, I've been kind of wrestling with the use of weapons on board. I know you're getting into uh, you know, some jurisdictions you may not want to you know, go into. Do you guys have an opinion on weapons on board and transport as far as the security piece of transport? Um, I don't want to, I don't want to, we're, we're on the, so I, I am here. I am not going anywhere. I will answer a ton of questions. Security, business, operations related. I'm more than, I will stay, stick around until every answer is, but we're on the business uh, plan section. And, let's, and, let's stay and, on that. And, and I would say there's a risk and risk management oh, associated yeah. with, with there's all a, There's a big reason why security companies either have armed guards or don't. There's actually at least 40% in the city of Chicago, uh, you know, commercial security uh, guards do not carry, uh, uh, have the license. Because A, it's a different requirement. It's a, it's a different, um, uh, it's a different internal liability, of course. It's a different insurance, insurance policy. Right. Uh, and, uh, and it's a different cost. So a lot of, uh, I, ha I know the owners of probably about 30 uh, security <laughs> firms. I'm friends with the, the, you know, the top, you know, like Securitas. I know all, all the guys over there. Um, there's, there's a lot of reasons. And also, a lot of security companies don't do cannabis businesses at all. And by policy, because it's still federally illegal. And if you're supplying services to federal governments or in states that it, or that it doesn't, you can't have that contradiction. So they've created, hey, well, we're not ready yet, so we don't do it. So, Mario, let me, let me again, we're going to wrap up here. And obviously, there are a lot more times. So I'll, I'll take a few more questions, but I want to make sure that our, our, our esteemed panelists get a chance to make some key points that they may want to make. In the, in the growing area, again, in order to effectively have a business plan, you have to have some understanding of how much can I grow in the space that I have allotted. Uh, how am I going to potentially process that and costs associated with that? How, how do you, or how would you suggest people that are working through trying to look at their cost and potential revenue output from a craft and infuse, how do they get some of those numbers and, and, and put that together in an effective business model? Okay, so again, everything is based off of square footage, no? And what your intentions are in your grow, are you trying to make money? Are you going after like medical aspects of it? There's a lot of variables when it comes to the cost of your equipment, what type of equipment you're gonna use, you know, all those different, and it's all again based off of square footage, so. And height. Yeah. Square footage yeah. and height, I mean, we've grown, both of us have grown. So it depends on the pot size. Your goal, your initial goal, is what will dictate how much of your space you would use. Just because you have a large facility doesn't mean you have to utilize it for that. In fact, it's not a commercial world, it's craft world. So we gotta make sure we stay within those parameters. So speaking of that, could a craft work with only a thousand feet of grow? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. And Absolutely. then you can hone your craft to perfect it and then scale up from there yep. mm -hmm. with that 5,000 square feet. And so, so then if you said, I, I'm gonna take a thousand, and I'm going to vote a thousand to grow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to vote another fifteen hundred to process and infuse. Exactly. Yes. That's yes. the whole deal of That's collectively what we're doing. working together. Okay. Together. okay. Okay. And then, uh, so these are so. They, but you have to model it out. Right. Yes. So you have to have your somebody on your team has to say this is how many uh, inventory turns or production cycles I'll be able to get 
on an annualized basis to give some prediction as to right. what my output is going to be, and then I need to price that. Now, if I'm if I'm consuming all of that internally, mm -hmm. then I have to work that into my finished goods pricing. So I have to know my cost of goods, and I have to really fully load my cost of goods in order to have an effective business plan. And so I've got to do some, again... Research. I think that people yes. need to get clear on what they desire, first Okay. Of all. Yeah. So once you're clear on what you desire, then you go ahead and write that out That's and start trying to figure out... The intention of the product that yeah. you want to grow. You know? Well, not just the intention of the product, because I can have, like, four strains that I want to grow perfectly, because I like these four strains, and I know they are going to be a boutique strain, which I can, mm. I can charge you know, four hundred dollars for a zip. You know, black market. Four hundred dollars for an ounce. Sorry. So the point. The point is, we all start somewhere. <laughs> the point is, once you're clear on what you desire, then all of those other things will fall into play because you'll know how much. You'll obviously take a guess on how much space you need because you won't need the entire one thousand square foot if you're trying to just do four different strains and you only want a certain amount of pots and if you have the right size of pot your tree can grow as tall as you want it to grow literally this is this is a weed you don't need <laughs> now because the uh, state of illinois is 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 taxing mm -hmm. on thc um, percentages, mm -hmm. uh, do you have to have internal testing? I have to THC test. Yeah, you, you want that. I mean, okay. as, not just as a crab grower, but as an infuser, you need to know what you're putting in your product. Absolutely. You need to be able to do all the calculations, Especially and you need to be able to show that within your business plan that you know how to calculate the percentage of THC, CBD, CBN, THC, all of those. Yeah. All of those. Yeah. All of them, not just two of them. Mm -hmm. You need to put that in your business plan to let them know you know how to do the mathematics behind it so that your items will come out. There is equipment yes. that is available for you, for a person to test their THC, but you need to do both, the equipment and the actual calculations. Go back to calculus thoughts from school and do that. Get good at it and put it within your business plan. So it needs to be in Yes, question, please. I have a question and then I have a statement. Um, my first question is pertaining to the business plan. Um, what I did is took the bill, which is basically law set for us to follow as entrepreneurs in the cannabis industry, and turned it into an outline. Took the whole entire outline and fit it into my business plan. And then that means that I'm complying to the Department of Agriculture, I'm complying with the state, and I'm also set a foundation to my business. Uh, so my question is, did I do it right? I think I did. But so, so your, your, you, what your, your answer just was is something that, you know, when I hear the word template, my, I, I, get, I get a little cringy. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. I'm not. I know you did. I know you did. I know you did. I, and I, I, he, I, I get a little cringy because you can Google template for anything. These, these are not, there is no template that the state, that anyone in the period of time has developed that analyzed all of these new, unique, you know, groundbreaking rules that the state of Illinois has done and, and, and created a uh, template for you to just, you know, you know, submit, okay, or add, add a little bit of flavor to. Your process is the way to do it is you analyze, you document, you organize, and create a structural outline for the execution of research and development and plan and law and citations and, and narrative in every single exhibit available. Now my statement is, um, I'm hearing like we have like these obstacles that we have to face. Um, truth be told, everybody who wants to be in this industry has the same exact obstacles. Mm -hmm. Just because you are a social um, applicant does not make you a step behind. That's right. If anything, you are three steps ahead. Come on, twenty percent of you And my advice to you is that don't sit up here and try to start all three. Pick one, and then build from there. I'm going to have an infusory company that you have, and yes, I can create my own transportation. However, I have a big fish I'm tapping right now, and that's to get this license to the government so that I can mass produce to feed my dispensaries and my consumers. Once I get my foundation laid down and I see it fit for, then I will start 
a transportation company for my company, because then I will be able to do that. But I'm hearing all these like, oh, all this time limited, all this, it doesn't matter. Create your outline, create your to-do list. If you don't know, go figure it out and make it happen. It doesn't matter anything about our lines and how much time we have, we can do it. Absolutely. All we have to do is just do it, as simple as that. You don't need a team, all you need is a team, you don't need to be I, 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 I really appreciate that statement. That, that's, that's, that's the kind of tenacity that you need. I love the, uh, However, the passion. Uh, one of the things that is required, and they are going to ask you, is that you have identified people that are going to play the various roles in the process right. that you have. Yes. So if you've identified them, that's fine. And basically what you're saying is do what works for you. Exactly. If what you just described, taking that outline off the state website, exploding it apart, making sure that every blank is filled in with something that yes. makes sense to you, that you're the ultimate reviewer of what you're going to submit. That I makes all... I need a team to start my business, but I'm going to be hiring a team right. to run my business. And the that's proof, what I mean by that. The proof is in the pudding, and, and I absolutely agree 100%. Yes, in the back, question. Um, as far as the capital goes, um, you're talking about pricing. What, uh, what percentage of your capital should be in pricing? What should we base our pricing off of? based on what's going on in the dispensaries now or what's going on in the streets? Do you mean pricing for your supplies or you mean pricing for the product, product, product that you want to sell to the, the so I've done a, a lot of negotiation in California I was a farmer liaison so I was a person who negotiated the contracts between farmers and dispensaries we can talk afterwards okay. but it's going to be so one thing to recognize though is that we're in a different market than California, so, the, so it's a transferable skill, mm -hmm. but we have different price points here. Yeah. We, have, mm -hmm. we're, we have different Absolutely. quantities, you know, different market, different everything. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend entrepreneurs that are not in the cultivation department to take on vendors of classes and programs to learn more about cultivation? Absolutely. I think that you should learn everything you possibly can about the industry that you are putting yourself into. So you do not need to focus only on your snitch. You need to learn everything you can possibly learn. You should be at a class, a session, or listening to something on YouTube instead of listening to a, you know, music or whatever. You should be literally smothering yourself within this industry. How can we find more cultivators? I had a struggle with that online, trying to find cultivators in Chicago to network with and connect with. Talk well, to you Mario, talk to, <laughs> talk to these guys. Talk to these guys. Yeah. Know. Um, um, are there any, are there any um, uh, trade organizations that are beneficial to people who want to be in certain aspects well, we of get the in, industry. We're going to get into some slides where we have those trade organizations specifically listed. Okay. Uh, last few questions in this business plan section. Yes, please. Well, it's not about the business plan. It's about the transportation license. Yes. Is there some type of legislation where we can't do B2C? We can only do B2B? B2B. Um, license. Only licensed dispensaries in the state of Illinois can sell to consumers. But transport licensee to licensee. So cultivators Correct. to dispensary. Yep. Cultivator to lab. That's it. To dispensary. Okay. Yep. I have a question about the $5,000 per row at the candy. Is it going to be allowed to double staff? Or is it. They is have that, no point on it. I know. Right? <laughs> so okay. When you don't great. see something you know, like, there. It's a great a, area. Yeah, because that's when you're doing your business plan and yeah. you're doing your math on your yield. You know, I mean, of course. you're just trying to, you know, get that grasp. So. This is the first I've been diving in trying to figure out the answer, and so Sometimes I think you that in your you don't don't seek one, you know, uh, exactly. Right, don't seek your one. revenue generator. Yeah. I think that you should have. I would base it off a of single. Yeah. Uh, just, just, just. Oh, yes. Yes. If you go up, you have to. One plant per square. You have to. Yeah. 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 You have to I, I do not believe you should double stack in your business plan. Okay. I believe that you should keep it simple. Okay. Yeah. And if you decide to double stack in reality. Yeah. Then you can, you know, let them know that. Yeah. So that's, that's the whole the thing. Business plan that's does. exactly the whole thing. When you're talking about regulatory requirements, yeah. if you tell them you're doing one level, and then you're actually doing two levels, there's a discrepancy between what you told sure. them you're going to do mm -hmm. and what you actually are doing. Right. That's, that's the, the problem. That. Right. That's when you're going to get shut down. So yeah. when, when you've got to manage expectations, so you can say in your plan that you're doing this. But before you actually have the evidence that you're doing the other, you need to let them know no. that things changed and yeah. now you're doing a double thing. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and here's why know. it's in compliance. Right. right. And so that's the kind of relationship you have to get into, which is 
oh, we changed something in our application. Now it looks like this. By so the by the way, this is what we're doing. Exactly. Let them know Why ahead of time. In the first one. You, you well, you can. You can. You can. You can. That's the vision. No reason. No reason. No, no, okay. It, can I, so I, this is very similar to floor plan design yeah. and all kinds. So don't get fancy. Right. Don't <laughs> keep it simple. Fancy if you're a government employee reviewing thousands of applications. Fancy is one thing and one thing only. A distraction, a distraction for something you're from the compliance. Right. What, so, so the so the, what the advice the advice I think you got was sound. Follow the compliance, and once you get your conditional license, then you implement your savoir faire, your creativity to do that. Okay. But okay. Don't could I? Uh, could, 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 could could I uh, just just I want to just just get a, a, a couple more questions uh, from the audience, but I also want to ask a question for those people that are wanting to be involved in transportation. Uh, can I see that show of hands again? And if you currently have, keep your hands up, please. Do you and you currently have some? transportation industry activity going on now, leave your hand up. Okay, so some of you put your hand down. I see some are kind of wiggling a little bit. <laughs> but those are still, so you want to be in transportation and you're in the transportation business now. Right. Same with you. You're, you're going to be in transportation and you're doing some transportation now. Same, okay, good. All right, let's see the same thing for Infuse. For those of you that want to be Infuse, put your hand up. And are you doing anything that is infused related now generating revenue for your activity? Or, 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 or wait a second, are you yeah, anything not infused related? Are you doing anything in terms of commercial cooking? That, that's what I mean. I mean anything it's that not is, infused because we're I, I, not I, infused. Again, again, right. please. <laughs> I'm, uh, what I'm asking is fundamentally, are you in business now in any way, shape, or form with anything associated with the business you want to move forward with? So you have experience. You have experience, yes. Now, now again, I'm not going to ask the crap people. I'm leaving them alone. <laughs> the, the, the point I'm trying to make is, is very, it's a simple point. Business is not complicated. It's just business. Do it. Don't wait. You know, if you want to learn about transportation, you know, this is going to be one of the most regulated areas to be involved with transportation, period. That hasn't stopped you know, a lot of people doing a lot of things and then saying, I want to, uh, this was very intelligent, I want to ease into some of these other areas. But if I'm baking, if I'm, if I'm craft brewing, if I'm doing some other kinds of things, you know, they're craft spirit companies in uh, Chicago right now. Yes, it is. So there's a lot going on in this industry that you want to pay attention to, not just this only dot on the wall. Right. You can make a million dollars and then finance yourself by the time you decide to do this highly regulated, highly Based taxed, very yes, secure activity, yes. <laughs> come on, get, 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 look, look at the bigger picture. It's so, pragmatic. What's yes, that? It's pragmatic. What it's pragmatic. So my, my responsibility is to promote business development, job creation, economic opportunity, period. Not just to focus on this area alone. Yes, please. You guys, what he's trying to encourage you to do is not just think of one avenue. Right? There are things that you have to do to get to where you are. So for example, whoever wrote a dispensary application, you now have writing experience. You follow me? It's like he said with the IT company. Who set the IT company example? Bruce. Yeah, so like you don't ever have to apply for a license in order to make money in the cannabis industry. That is not how I got involved at all. That is not how I got involved at all. And there are so many incubators in California that will help people to develop ideas where they're never touching the cannabis plant. So he wants you guys to think outside the box instead of being so focused on one little piece. He's a business guy, so he wants you to think of all these other ancillary businesses that you can make money from. I mean, something as simple as jewelry. And, and I also believe yeah. that you guys, again, as was indicated, that, you know, you wouldn't be here today if you weren't talented. You wouldn't be here today if you weren't paying attention, smart, looking for opportunities. Those are all of the fundamental elements of being a successful entrepreneur, willing to learn and be open and receptive to a blessing that's got your name learn, on it. Learn, open, and receptive. Just, just be, so I, I want to make a closing statement, just a couple of things. The person that made this room available to us runs a program. His name is Vince Williams. He runs a small business development program out of this facility and another one down the street. Uh, he has a lot of support activities for business plan development, 
and supporting business, helping them find capital, helping them find space and location, all those kinds of things. So uh, I'll put these brochures out on the front table. You can snatch them when you want to go. Also around the corner from here, there's a program called Sunshine Enterprises. Uh, they have a very effective program. They've graduated over 800 people, helping them start businesses of all shapes and sizes. They have a wonderful uh, community of people. And really what is so important is we need to create a community of entrepreneurs. So we've been fortunate that we've been able to find highly talented people like, like the folks up here. And, and they have other things they could be doing today, but they believe in you. They know that some of you guys are going to be the next big thing. And, they, and we want to be able to say, we knew you went. Don't forget about me when you become the big shot. You know, so, I, I was there with you on Titus Grove when this whole thing got going. So we can grow together by sharing information, by sharing content, by you leveraging some of the resources that we have collectively. It's cooperative economics. Cooperative economics to get the blessing and, and that's been true in the agriculture field for a very, very, very long time. Pertaining to the business plan, um, when it comes down to your financial analysts, um, because it's a new industry for our state, do you recommend us having a low and high margin as far as what we is, what our predictions for our revenue uh, is going to be? Our I would, uh, I, would I would say that you could do it one of two ways. You could either state what your assumption is and then just have one, or you could do a high and a low and explain that there's a range. Okay. Either way would be acceptable. As long as you're communicating up front, these are my assumptions, or this is what I've done and why I did it. That's for an infuser, if my goal is to sell, let's say, 4,000 candy bars a month, but in reality, right now, the market, I'm only selling 500, then should I have a low and a high on my business plan? to give me a realistic idea of what the bad and what the best may she just said out. She just said yes to that plan. question. A a absolutely, yeah. you absolutely model it, not just with one case scenario or the best case scenario, yeah. but make sure that, because you know your cost, figure out what your break even is, yeah. have a worst case scenario for being able to break even by doing a couple of things that get you to that point, and then show some upside potential if things could be potentially better. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so Bruce, thank you for thank moderating. You. Um, Tom.